Hello, thanks for joining us today on the Motorsport Diesel Channel. Um, what you see before you here is the rail pressure relief valve for, um, that would be your LLY Duramax, your LBZ, LMM, and the 6.7 Cummins, and probably some other applications as well. Uh, we know that the general consensus is to take these out and plug them, and we're going to show you exactly why um, people are recommending that you do that. The problem is, if, if you're doing performance programming, commanding more pressure out of these systems, this valve is an issue in stock form. Uh, what happens, once the valve opens, it's what's called a two-stage valve. Once the valve opens, it's held open until the pressure drops to a predetermined point, uh, roughly um, 65 MPA, 650 bar roughly. So what happens is if, if you're running down the road and you nail the throttle and you ask for a lot of rail pressure above what the, the limit is set on the valve, then the valve opens and your rail pressure just drops. It plummets to nothing until the pressure can drop below 650 bar or 65 MPA. Then the valve reseats and it'll allow the pressure to take off again. All right, this is the emit common rail injector tester and also we offer um, adapters that allow you to put these rail pressure relief valves in here and test those as well and we're going to show you if you buy one of these machines that is how you can modify these valves and make a single stage valve out of them so we're going to show you and this is going to be I don't know probably quite alarming there, there's probably going to be a hose that blows off of here because the pressure that's diverted is so high. There we go. So this is what happens. The last time it really didn't do it. So you can see um, the pressure once it jumped up, and let's see here, we can stop the scope, and we can come up here, and we can zoom in. So we can see that uh, about 200 and, this is 210, that's 212. So between 210 and 212 MPA, when the pressure spiked up, we can see that the valve opened up. So we're gonna we're gonna close this part. Let me go ahead and expand this screen. So um, we can see just in a split second the pressure gets down here to you know about 60 or so. It says 72 here. So uh, we're maintaining 72 MPA. Turn the scope back on. So that's what happens until the rail pressure drops. Like if you're running wide open and this valve blows open, your rail pressure is going to drop to here and it's going to stay there until you jump off of the throttle, let the pressure drop below this point and let this valve reseat and take off again. For some guys, they get pressure oscillations. You know, the pressure's up and down, up and down, up and down because, you know, ultimately it's going to drop below that point and reseat and take off again. So this is not good for, for a performance application. And all these valves, these we did these for another company. Uh, we've converted all these to a single stage valve. So um, we're gonna show you what happens when you convert this to a single stage valve. You no longer have the same issue. It'll come up to whatever pressure we set it at and it'll maintain it. Uh, in segment one, we didn't discuss another thing um, a lot of guys are doing, they're buying the shim kits uh, for these relief valves. And I'm going to tell you, the plug and the shims, they're completely worthless. What you're going to do, if you shim it, you're effectively going to raise the pressure on it so high that it's never going to open, is essentially what you're going to do. Uh, this valve has absolutely no shim in it. I don't think any of these valves, except one, which was pretty much worn out, we had to put one shim in it just to get the pressure up. And once these valves are worn, they're all going to be set at different pressures. Uh, this one is 190 MPA. This one's 170. So this one would work well for an LLY. This one is 190. This one is 200. This one is 190. And this one is 180. So if you've got... If you got a 180 MPA rail pressure sensor like your 5.9 Cummins LB7 and LLY Duramaxes, you know, it's going to be foolish to set your valve higher than what the sensor can read. Uh, for LBZ and LMM and 6.7 Cummins, 
Um, those are a 2000 bar system or 200 MPA. So it's going to be foolish to set, you know, the relief valve above what the sensor can actually read. So without further ado, we're going to show you um, how this thing works when it's been modified to a single stage. I can't see it over there. So as you can see here, so we're bouncing up about 210, but once we turn the pressure off, so we're going to hold, right now it's holding 192 MPA. So you're going to get spikes a little bit higher as the valve is opening, but you can see you're going to be operating in that range uh, from about 210 or 15 MPA to 190. And as you can see, we don't get this explosion when the valve opens. So you got to stop shimming these valves and, and plugging the rail. The, the problem is... These CP3 pumps, let's say you're wide open run, sled pulling, drag racing, out on the street, it doesn't matter, and you've got dual pumps or a big single pump. When you jump, jump off the throttle, the injectors can close immediately down to minimum output. The CP3 is still going to be generating pressure for just a split second beyond the time the injectors close. And all you're going to see is the resolution capabilities of your sensor. These uh, this emit um, can do up to 220 MPA or to, uh, 2200 bar, 33,000 PSI. That's what we can read on here. Uh, most of these systems that have these valves, 2000 bars, the maximum that you're going to see, pretty much every one of these is going to be a 2000 bar except the LLY, which is 100 and, and, um, or 1800 bar, 180 MPA. So what happens when you jump off the throttle, the rail pressure is going to go through the roof. These CP3 pumps can generate 50 or 60,000 PSI. It's not a problem for them to do it, I promise you. So um, you want to protect your injectors. I've seen it blow the nuts off the end of the lines and, and lines split and everything else. And that is something that can definitely happen. So. Uh, if you need any of these valves modified, you can send them to us. If you buy one of these machines, we'll show you how to do these valves. This is the ultimate fix for these things, for drivability concerns, for longevity, for making injectors last. And you can damage CP3 pumps with huge pressure spikes, but you don't have to do that if you know what you're doing. This is something that we developed years ago uh, when we first saw that this was a problem. We've been doing these valves since probably about 2007 or 2008 modifying these valves. So it's not something that we, we are now, but it's not something that we openly, you know, talked about before. But if, if we sold a pump to a customer, we would always try to have them send us a valve. And that's what this is here. We're doing a 10.6 millimeter stroker pump and a set of injectors for the customer that uh, owns this valve here. But it's time to bring this stuff out in the public. I see videos showing get your relief valve out and put this stupid plug in, you know, and, and those videos get hundreds of thousands of views and it's the most idiotic thing that there ever was. And if you're making these plugs, I'm sorry, but you're not my buddy and you're not the, the friend of the customer either. If you're making these valves and promoting this crap because it's junk and it's just going to tear stuff up, fix it the right way. And I know for, for a lot of people in the diesel market, there's no knowledge, there's no information, and that's a big problem. But now you can see, we're gonna run this thing one more time. You can see what this thing does and how it works. You saw it before, how once the pressure spiked up, it just dump it. There we go, look, it's holding it right there. It's a little over 200. This is a low output machine. And when we stop it, look, 192. Comes right back to the same place, and it holds it. Guys, wise up. Motorsport Diesel, we have the knowledge, we have the tools, we have the equipment, we have the background, we have the experience to take your business to the next level. Quit messing around and doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Help your customers, educate your customers. Stop guessing, start testing.